years ago, the most powerful Lexus IS available produced 306 horsepower, which actually put it at the top of its class if you excluded full-blown performance vehicles like the BMW M3 and Mercedes-AMG C63. However, times have changed, and yet Lexus continues to hamstring its compact sports sedan with the exact same 3.5 liter V6, producing only a little bit more power than it did 15 years ago. That puts the IS at a huge disadvantage when compared against the Mercedes-AMG C43 and BMW M340i. That all changes, however, with the arrival of this, the 2022 Lexus IS500 F Sport Performance, packing 472 horsepower, courtesy of a naturally aspirated, high revving 5 liter V8, the Lexus IS500 is a fantastic sports sedan. While it might not be the dynamic equivalent of its German competitors, the IS500 is still a wonderful sports sedan with a phenomenal soundtrack to boot, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Before we go too much further, be sure to subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media at MotorOne.com so that you can keep up with our content and let us know what you think in the comments. Even though it has the same shrieking V8 as the old ISF, the IS500 isn't a maximum attack canyon carver, instead using the moniker F Sport Performance. As such, it's not hugely different, visually speaking, from the lesser IS300 and 350 models. The hood does get some fabulous creases and bulges to make space for that lusty V8, and there are obliquely placed quad exhausts that tie it in with its forebear. Otherwise, it's standard issue IS here, although that's not necessarily a bad thing. The smallest Lexus sedan wears an outsized spindle grille bookended by swoosh-shaped headlights and a pair of air curtain ducts on the bumper corners, but as aggressive as it all is, the IS is also a well-composed and attractive piece of design. A crease that rises toward the rear fender gives the IS500 a husky, planted stance, and the full-width taillight panel is a huge improvement over the melting lighting of the old IS. With long hood, short deck proportions, and the wheels stretched out to the corners, the IS500 is one of the best looking and most aggressively styled compact sports sedans on the market. That performance light ethos also extends to the interior. If you're expecting a drastically different experience from the IS350, you're probably going to be disappointed. There is a sliding instrument cluster that's inspired by the Lexus LFA supercar, and that's pretty cool, but otherwise this is pretty much the same interior as you'll get in other IS products. That's not necessarily a bad thing though, especially with this vehicle's F-Sport steering wheel that just feels fantastic and has these great thumb bolsters right here where you need them. Additionally, these seats hold me in place so well during corners, and at the same time, they're really supportive and comfortable on the freeway as well. This is just a pretty comprehensively designed interior that does pretty well in most cases, the only exception being a big gigantic swath of natty black plastic right in front of the passenger's knees where the glove box door is. There's also kind of some weird mismatched trim between the door panel and the center console that I really am a little bit surprised by. Usually Lexus shows a lot more attention to detail on those matters. Setting out in the IS, it doesn't really blow you away, which is surprising given that it has 472 horsepower. And the reason for that is simple. It makes that peak at 7,100 RPM. To put some context to that number, it has a red line of 7,400 RPM, which means you only have about 300 revs to play with if you really want to make the most of this engine. And the reality is you're not going to be tacking this thing out on your normal grocery run. But once you get on in a canyon like this and you shift it over to Sport Plus, you can really have a good time. And that's because it sharpens the throttle response and it makes the transmission a little bit more downshift prone which lets you really take advantage of this thing's prodigious thrust once you do get the engine spinning. Towing into all of that grunt, the IS500 greets you with a fantastic naturally aspirated bellow. In terms of soundtrack, this 5 liter V8 is one of the most exciting engines ever produced in my opinion, and in the IS500 it's no exception. There's not quite as much exhaust noise as I might like, but then again, the induction noise is so intoxicating that I'm not necessarily sure you need all that sound coming from the rear of the vehicle anyway. And then when you introduce the IS500 to a corner, it doesn't necessarily shy away from that either. It does a good job of picking a line and the steering is reasonably accurate and responsive. I do wish there was a little bit more weight. It's just a little bit light, honestly, which is surprising given this vehicle's mission. But at the same time, I think this is a better tiller than you'd find in a BMW M340i for sure. And it's probably pretty close to even with the AMG C43. Once you're in the corner, the IS500 takes a set 
remarkably well and these Bridgestone Potenza tires have plenty of grip. Even though this is a rear wheel drive vehicle, I haven't had one single traction issue on corner exit. And that's also probably due to the standard Torsen limited slip rear differential. And then once you've had your fill of adrenaline and it's time to chill out, you just press down on the drive selector and switch it into normal or eco mode and just let the vehicle kind of waft you around. It's got a smooth and comfortable ride and it handles bumps very well. And as exciting and thrilling as the engine is when you're really revving it out, when it's time to relax a little bit, it's more than happy to oblige with kind of a muted thrum that doesn't necessarily attack your ears quite as much as you'd expect. I do have a few complaints though, primarily with the 8-speed automatic transmission. In fully automatic mode, it's actually surprisingly willing to downshift, which is unusual for a Toyota product. And then slap it over to manual and these paddle shifters do a good job of commanding the transmission. However, when you're coming to a stop, it's surprisingly jerky, particularly the downshift between third and second. I'm honestly kind of surprised at how harsh those downshifts are, particularly for a luxury sedan. You might expect it if this was a really hard-edged, race-ready machine, but when you're just toddling around town and coming up to a stop sign, you wouldn't expect it to be that jerky. In spite of that, I've actually had a lot of fun driving the IS500. This is a very well-balanced vehicle with plenty of power and lots of grip, but at the same time, it's more than happy to settle into a long freeway cruise. So there you have it. The Lexus IS500 might not be that fire-breathing BMW M3 competitor that some of us were expecting, and honestly, even the lesser M340i makes a stronger first impression with that improved low-end torque and really impressive chassis balance. But at the same time, once you get used to this vehicle's idiosyncrasies, including that fantastic high-revving V8, it becomes a phenomenal machine in a canyon like this. It's got excellent steering, turn-in response is very impressive, the chassis is easy to balance and control through a corner, and at the same time, it's more than content to quiet down and blend in with surrounding traffic. That split personality makes the Lexus something of a bargain in this class. You just don't get that raw power or that sonic drama anywhere near this price point, and that alone makes the IS500 a winner.